Hello everyone and welcome to Robot C for Dummies. In today's video, I'll be showing you all on how to program your line trackers for your VEX robot so you could use it during autonomous mode and uh, it's going to create a much more um, effective robot during the competition. So just to get started, some people might think, you know, line tracking devices aren't useful or they're not even part of the competition, but actually line tracking sensors are going to be very beneficial once you start using them. So um, I would say that play around with your line tracking device. And if you come to a point where you say, how do I even calibrate my line trackers? Well, watch this video to the end so uh, just to show you all what I'm gonna say is if you look at this line tracking device this is what I'm trying to mean so if you have a line tracking device and you would usually try to attach all of these three sensors to the bottom of your robot it could it can be any type of chassis that you have and what I mean is if you have a three three sensors that line um, next to each other, you have an active light sensor and these three sensors are actually analog sensors. So whenever someone says, you know, add a light and line follower uh, sensors, they are going to be analog sensors for VEX in this cage. And also some and also some of you might be asking, how do these um, devices actually work? Well, it says here it sends out it sends out an IR beam and measures how much of this beam is reflected back. So basically what these sensors do is they they kind of reflect back an IR beam and, and they see how much of beam is, you know, they receive back. So it's basically they are trying to differentiate the color variations on the surface that your robot travels on. So that's what they are, these line tracking devices work. And also each of these sensors reads a value between 0 and 4095. So what do I mean is if any values that you go within those range, they're not going to work. So you have to be very careful while calibrating your sensors. And also for these line trackings, if you're going to use natural language uh, PLTW, uh, that's what uh, you should set in your um, robot C. If you're going to use that, uh, all you're going to use is just four codes, sensor values over here, and then you can use uh, until dark, until light, and and so on. This just four codes that you could use to play around with this line tracking device. And also, what do I mean is, um, if you go to line, let's just say this is going to be my sample line. Let's just say this is going to be my sample line. So if this is a line, and what some people might think, what what do you mean by co color variation? Well, this is black, right? So this is a dark color that's going to be here. And then there is two sides of light colors. So what happens is these sensors, each of these three sensors over here, they read out a different threshold. And so these light that's reflected back from the line that uh, the robot is traveling on, it actually causes the robot to be careful. So is this line going to be deviated or is this line going to turn or so on? So the robot constantly, it measures how much light is get, it's getting back. And if it's getting a darker pattern, which is over here, if it's getting a darker pattern, the robot comes to know that, oh no, I'm, I'm actually traveling on the, uh, apart from the line. I have to like get back to the line. So the robot goes and it constantly, it, it has to catch up with the line. So that's how it, it kind of works. And just to give you all a much more better understanding, let me jump to my uh, program. But before that, let me just set some agenda of what you would learn, learn from this video. So by end of this video, you would hopefully learn on how to, on how to, on how to set up your line tracking for your robot and do a sample program that works with your clawbot. So just, so just three agendas that I've set for all of you. So hopefully you'll not be watching a long video over there. So set up a line tracking for your robot, do a sample program, which I'm gonna show you in a while, do a sample program that works with your clawbot and to create a line tracking robot and also create thresholds for tracking lines experimentally because this is important in VEX. Nothing can be calculated scientifically. If I tell you what, what that means, you know, you have to uh, create thresholds for sensors experimentally unless 
you know that it's going to work obviously like that um, for example bump sensors or touch sensors might actually work um, uh, work scientifically say if you have one if you code in one or if it's going to be touched if it's going to be released they all you could predict them but these thresholds you can predict them unless you test them experimentally and also at the end of this video i'll be including a virtual world simulation that shows how my sample code works with a clawbot so let's jump to robot c and in robot c i've actually managed to uh, make a code that works uh, for this line tracking device so uh, just to get started this is the one that i was explaining about uh, previously so what happens is the robot let's just say my cursor can be a robot so if i move back to the line that i had initially so imagine this is the line and my robot starts here so the robot's going and while it's going, it's starting to deviate. When when it's starting to deviate, imagine my cursor going to this light surface. It's going to track that there is no threshold that is going to be calculated. So what happens is if, if I'm traveling in the line, nothing wrong happens. But once when I start deviating from this line, there is a sensor within these three lines that's going to indicate to me, oh no, this line, we are not traveling according to the line, we are deviating. And what happens is the robot turns. So imagine my, my cursor going this way and, and and my robot turns because it's it's get, it, it got deviated. So it's trying to catch up with this line and it might deviate again. So it, it can go maybe this time a bit more here. And, and, and my robot signals uh, um, gets the signal from its line tracker saying, oh no, you have deviated from this line. So it tries to catch up and goes this way. So similarly, that's how th these sensors actually work with your VEX robot. And also you could use this to calibrate, say if your robot has to go beyond this line or just within this line or so on, there's so much of purpose you can create using this. So the program that I've created here, if you look at it, you will start to see some similarities. So I'm saying some adding some if statements here and I'm saying, if my sensor value for the left line reaches beyond this threshold so what happens is if anything be below this threshold it's going to be a light surface if anything that goes beyond it that's going to be a dark line a dark line or, or a line that is um not a white line so for example if you look at this this is a white surface that's being bounced back and uh, to the light sensor and this is the dark line which is the line that you want your robot to follow in so if your robot calculates that oh no i have deviated from that line this thing reaches above that threshold and so this sensor tells your robot to turn left and coming back to turn left and turn right that i've set over here um if you want your robot to, if you want to make your line simple and, and work as easy as possible, try to create these methods. So what do I mean is if you have a white, if you create some white statements here, you're creating essentially some methods that you want your robot to follow in. So for example, if I have white straight, I'm going to say start motor, have a left motor that goes at 30 uh, in the speed of 30 and also my, my right motor that goes at the speed of 30. So that's straight. If I want it to turn left, I want my left motor to go in reverse and right motor to stay positive. So, so on and so forth. Just create some, some methods so that your robot knows how to travel straight or turn left or turn right. And using those methods, it's easier for you to add them in this if statements over here so for example if my sensor value left line reaches beyond this threshold it's going to turn left until it senses that oh okay let's reach it until dark so until the sensor line uh sensor line uh sensor which is over here so until my my center line detects that oh yeah you're traveling in the in the right direction of the of tracking line until it does that it's going to turn left and similarly, if you're going to use it for the light, right line, it's going to detect um, that, you know, if, if something goes wrong, if the robot is deviating and it's it's going, um, say, if I'm ha if I'm having my 
line over here if the, my robot is deviating here if it's going you know on the left then suddenly you know it's starting to read oh no you're you're going you're deviating from this path and so what happens is it actually tries to combine back to this line so that's how those sensors are actually gonna work i'm gonna include this code below in the description you could um, access it and also um that's how the sample program actually works and if everything goes according to the plan according to the robot traveling in its path this is going to be if the sensor value center line is going to deduct according to its threshold it's going to go straight so very simple lines of quotes you're gonna have this quotes as well in the description and also this is how the pragma statement I have created for for sensors these are remember that these are all analog sensors do watch my previous videos on intro to sensors to learn more about digital and analog sensors and also these are the motors that I've said for uh, my chassis just left and right motors and so let's click compile and and let's just save this already saved this but so let's run this in a virtual world and see what happens so I'm gonna have a, a, a robot slalom which is going to be this line that I'm gonna track for my robot let's see how it goes Remember, there could be chances of chances of failure, but let's see how it goes. So my robot tracks the line. So this this is clearly tracking the line. If you could see from a top view, this is going to be the map that the robot has to follow. And if you look at this, robot actually follows it. So if you look at it from this view, it's constantly reading these values. And and if you see those even small minute curvatures it's it's constantly looking at those thresholds that it's receiving back and forth from the surface and it's turning according to the way that i programmed it and most of you a good solution is don't just add a program to uh, track the track the line but you could even add obstacles and say you know the robot should stop or or move on or proceed you could do all those and so I, uh, I learned the batch and, and so so that's how uh, hopefully that uh, robot hopefully the line tracking program works and uh, thanks for watching this video do um, comment below if you think I could improve these videos any further Thank you and have a wonderful day ahead.